Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. Joseph Parker has put on one of the best performances of his career, getting a 12-round decision against Derek Chisora in Manchester. The scorecards are 114-112, 115-111, 115-110. We'll come back to those scorecards later because Parker dropped Chisora three times in this fight, so some of those scorecards are wildly close, and one of them, you would note, would have um, Derek Chisora winning. Had he uh, Parker not got those knockdowns? We will come to that and discuss. But first of all, I can get behind this version of Joseph Parker. We've heard for years from Joseph Parker about what he's going to do, how he's going to go in, knock people out, be aggressive, put it on people and put on a performance. Really has Parker actually managed to do what he said he was going to do in this fight while he didn't get the knockout he almost got it there were some times and we'll talk about the finishing a little bit later on but joseph parker put it on the line here this was a performance where to some extent the next stage of his career was riding on it because obviously he sneaked a decision the first time round against Derek Chisora and he didn't look fantastic in that fight was dropped Derek Chisora was bullying him at times but he turned the tables here he was the one from the outset who was looking to be aggressive he took the center ring he was trying to put it on Chisora land right hands hold his feet and really let his power punches go a lot of success in this fight. I'm not going to go through round by round, but what I will say in terms of uh, some of this action, great fight. I loved the fight. It was a slugfest, and Joseph Parker, for the most part, was the man in control. He took some shots. He certainly, Derek Chisora, you know, had some success in there, but it was Joseph Parker, especially on the back of the uppercut, a Parker punch that was once one of the best punches in his arsenal, which has largely been missing in recent years. It came to the fore here in this fight. So that uppercut was responsible for a couple of the knockdowns and Derek Chisora was almost out. So Parker badly hurt Chisora in rounds three. He didn't drop him there, but he dropped him in round four, round seven and round eight. And obviously in between times as well, he was catching and backing him up, stunning him sometimes. But the uppercut was money all night. Joseph Parker had obviously, with Andy Lee, his new trainer, done their research. Derek Chisora dipping down and uh, just catching that uppercut that was waiting for him. Joseph Parker did a lot of damage with that uppercut. The right hand was also a weapon that, you know, when he holds his feet and actually and goes for it, Joseph Parker does have the power to hurt heavyweights. We just haven't seen him, you know, largely in recent years with a sort of mostly back foot game, putting it on guys. But this was a fight where he needed a performance. He needed to sort of show some intent, and he certainly did. The uppercut was money. Um, Got to say, though, the coming in at 251 pounds, that was certainly a gamble heading into this. But Parker, after the fight, he actually said, look, I felt more powerful. I felt like I had more on my shots and that I was hurting him more than the first fight. But after about six rounds he was starting to fatigue but obviously Chisora was taking the worst of the action and uh, he was uh, almost out on his feet a couple of times especially after being dropped by those uppercuts round three it looked like he was ready to be taken out but Parker didn't pounce on him he took his time and ultimately let Chisora off the hook and I guess to some extent that was the story with the finishing in this fight it just wasn't good enough so while this was a wildly different performance from Parker compared to some recent efforts where he actually looked aggressive he was having success he was being dominant at times the finishing is still something that is obviously going to be a work in progress because um, multiple times in this fight around three four seven and eight he let Chisora off the hook. Chisora was able to basically, sometimes after the knockdown, just you know, casually walk off to the corner. Parker sort of slowly trailing behind him. Chisora, you know, sort of crouching down, ready for something, ready to try counter as well. But obviously, um, Joseph Parker wasn't trying to to fall for that. But. In those um, situations, Chisora was able to, you know, get his sort of legs back under him to some extent and survive. But there were times where Joseph Parker, in a couple of those times where he dropped him, Chisora was able to to rally back in those rounds. 
and I think part of that was uh, fatigue induced. Joseph Parker, you know, putting it on, Derek Chisora, and then having to take a breather to try and recover. And some of those rounds, Derek Chisora really finished strongly and catching Parker with overhand rights, big shots to the body. This was not just a one way traffic. Sure, Chisora was the one getting the worst of it, he was the one going down, but he was also delivering some punishment for Parker. And I would say Joseph Parker took the most punishment in his career in this fight. But at the, in the same breath, it's also this, uh, the most punishment he's ever delivered. And he needed a performance, I think, to capture fans' imagination because Joseph Parker has been super flat in recent years, nicking decisions, not looking you know, good in fights. At times, he looked great here. Uh, sometimes the punch, uh, punch selection, especially with that uppercut, and sometimes he'd land jabs, a nice one too. He was really picking his shots well in points. But as the fight w wore on, and obviously this is for Chisora too, both these guys were super gassed. Um, rounds 10 to 12, it was it was kind of like two go homeless guys with a wedge of cheese. It, it They just were super sloppy and it was a question, would Chisora be able to make Parker pay for the missed opportunities and not stopping him? But Parker ultimately was never down. He was never hurt seriously, but he certainly wore some big shots and was backed up. Uh, one or two times he would it was buzzed as well, just slightly, momentarily, but obviously he was able to weather the storm and uh, it goes the distance. But not for lack of trying from Parker, you know, with this new strategy this new reinvented style under Andy Lee. He tried to fight fire with fire, and for the most part, he came out on top. And a couple of things I would note as well, um, besides the finishing, which is obviously a work in progress, and the gas tank, which I think there's a question, certain fighters um, that he will face will have a better gas tank than Derek Chisora. I mean, maybe this is a horses for courses situation. He won't be able to just rumble with guys and brawl with guys um, in certain fights, certain style matchups uppercut was great um also i i like the way that derek just uh, that joseph parker was leaning on his man at times especially when he had him on the ropes and he was really trying to sap derek just saw a strength lay all over him all 251 pounds very effective tactic i think the inside game still is a work in progress derek just saw when things were up close for the most part i thought he was having the better of the exchanges often joseph parker likes to fall in just sort of bang to the body he doesn't necessarily work that effectively on the inside i thought just saw with some of his short uppercuts um, his body shots he wasn't just having as Malik Scott likes to sort of say some sort of silent agreement to tie up Chisora was looking to work Parker some of the times was but often he was just trying to tie up and get out of that situation reset um, but Andy Lee I, th I think we saw some influences with the strategy here I think uh, he looks a bit more powerful he's sitting down on these shots uh, maybe it's a confidence thing too that he hasn't had the confidence to fight this way in before, and Andy Lee's been able to instill that in him. Interestingly, though, after the fight, Eddie Hearn was spoken to and was asked, well, what's next for Joseph Parker? And Hearn said, obviously, Parker needed a performance like this. And I think if you're a Joseph Parker fan, you've been waiting for a performance like this, where you can watch the fight and be really pleased with the effort, the intent. Sure, it went 12 rounds, but we know Parker's not a massive power puncher. But at least we saw the power. He was using it and he was able to, for the most part, be on top here. Uh, but after the fight, Eddie Hearn said that um, the IBF um, could be a route for Joseph Parker in 2022, maybe a final eliminator with Philip Hergovich. But I want to circle back to the scorecards. 114, 112. Bearing in mind, there were three knockdowns, so 10 8 rounds. Um, well, presumably, we'll have to see the scorecards. I mean, maybe that judge on a couple of times which just saw a finish strong. Maybe it was just a 10-9. We have seen instances uh, more recently of that. Uh, round three, Parker obviously had Chisora badly hurt as well. But apart from that, there were rounds, I think, Chisora towards the end of the fight was having some more successes, certainly as Joseph Parker slowed badly. he really, Both these guys were super gassed towards the end. Rounds 10 to 12, he, it was basically, you know, not a lot of action. It was basically hanging on. Um, you know, the flurries, the shots were just a lot less. But actually, the referee almost jumped in in round nine, just saw it hung on. And you have to say that he's a warrior because the referee about to jump in, you could feel it from Howard Foster. And then just saw lets his hands go, really has a good flurry to try put it on Parker to keep in the fight. And he did. He made it to the, um, the distance. He was fighting on instinct. And Chisora 
clearly again we've had another good fight heart of a warrior he gave it his all um but ultimately he's come up short here not for trying of the judges because uh clearly the 114 112 card they were going to try rob joseph parker on that one but what next for chisora well with these sorts of performances these sorts of fights he will continue to get work they can still pull one more out for him i'm sure maybe he is on the downslide in terms of you know just sort of five years ago would he have uh, guessed as badly would he have had more success it's hard to say but joseph parker well and truly deserved this and if an ibf eliminator is up next for him well i'd like to see it him and philip hergovich that's a really good fight I'm not so sure that this style of fighting is going to be as effective against Philip Hergovich, but be an interesting fight. Remembering those guys were pairs from the amateurs. They've fought many moons ago. They're well known to each other. So it's yeah, obviously they haven't seen each other for quite a while in the ring, but uh, Joseph Parker, Philip Hergovich, I like that. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.